Hey guys, welcome to our video. Thanks, buddy. Hey guys, it's Adam here from Shield and Sword Academy and Crucible Defensive Training. Today we're bringing you guys a disassembly and reassembly of the X95 from IWI. It is the uh, version 2.0 of the Tavor, if you will. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to complete dismantle, completely reassemble it, and we're going to show you guys how to install the Geisley Automatics uh, lightning bow trigger for the Tavor. Then we're going to do some trigger weights as well so you guys can see what it's like, uh, the difference in trigger um, from the stock one to the lightning bow and from the stock trigger pack to the Super Sabre tr uh, trigger pack. Uh, it does make a huge difference. All right, so let's get started. So first things first, if you guys don't have the A2 birdcage hider, uh, birdcage, the flash hider, you're probably going to have to take yours off. I have, a mu I have a muzzle break on mine from Silencer Co. for my suppressor. I've got to take mine off, otherwise this isn't going to work. So I take that off. Next thing, go to uh, your grip right here, and there is a little screw right there. We are going to take that screw out. And I know what some of you guys are saying. I have the original Tavor. I didn't have to do this. You do with this one. Believe me. I'll show you guys why. So if you're taking that out, now this grip just comes off like that. Now you guys are going to notice on the grip right here, this little nub, this is important. This is part of what holds in your forend. Unlike the Tavor, this forend comes off much easier, but at the same time, it's held in two points. One, a screw we're going to take out, uh, and then two, this grip. All right, so next thing, you need a three millimeter Allen key. That's going to be used right here. And we are going to unscrew that. There we go, that screw comes out. Now, unlike the Tavor, this is where it gets super simple. This whole thing just comes off just like that. Charging handle and everything is right there. Um, when you go to reassemble it, I found it's a lot easier to take the charging handle and separate these two. So there's that. Now, you're going to have to do it at some point anyways because we're doing a full disassembly. If you just want to get to your trigger, to your trigger, you wouldn't have to do this. But I do need to get to, uh, I want to do a full disassembly. So for that, I've got to take off this cotter pin right here. So I take this up. Make sure you don't lose it. Take that little cotter pin out. And this is your swing, sw uh, your swivel swing for your, uh, for your sling. Uh, a little bit of a tongue twister there. So we're going to have to unscrew this, and you can do this by hand. The one thing you're going to have to do is take something, I just use my Allen key, and press from the opposite side, because just like any two-sided screw, uh, when you start to undo it, the one side is going to spin, you're not going to get anywhere. So just kind of push it up against it. Super simple. Spin this side out, the cotter pin side. And there we go. That's where the cotter pin went through. Now you push in on that screw this way, and this whole unit comes out. I try to keep these together, guys. It's a whole lot easier. It'll save you time later on. Save you time later on. All right, so with that done, the big thing left, which is probably the biggest pain in the butt, is to take out your barrel. You can see right here, if you're not familiar with the Tavor, that there is a L on this side and an O on this side. You guys are going to see it from there. But L on this side, O on this side. You guys can see right now there's a white line facing the L. That means it's locked. We have to turn this until it gets over to the O side for open. Now, on this side, right here, is part of the barrel lock system. You need to take something, we're going to use a little Allen key, and you have to depress the top of it, and it pushes out the bottom ever so nice, like that. And you can see this little cutout right here. This cutout, this the inside metal part right here, has to be lifted up above the cutout, and then it spins. It's kind of a second locking feature. So I'm going to depress that from this side. You guys aren't really going to see that. And on this side, which you're going to be facing, we're going to use our barrel tool right here. This will go inside. And then as I am lifting up on that little, uh, little locking mechanism on this side, I'm going to turn this. Uh, this barrel wrench. The barrel wrench will turn, this will be held up, and the whole system will turn and the barrel will come out real nice and easy. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Let me depress this on this side. Sorry guys, I had a, this is actually the second time we're filming this. The first time, very unfortunately, our camera died halfway through. 
and I didn't catch it. So I don't have any footage from the first time. So we have to redo this. And of course, when you're redoing stuff, the other thing that happened during our wonderful little day is that my punch set, actually my friend's punch set that he was letting me borrow to do this video, the punch broke. So we don't have our punch set anymore for that little area. All right, so I've got this side opened up. I'm going to ensure that, dang it, sorry guys, much easier with the punch set. So, now with that held up, we're going to take the barrel wrench, put it in there, and start to turn it. And this does start out very tough, guys, and you're going to feel like you're going to break something. But it will start turning. And the hardest part, there we go, now it's super loose. It'll work super easy. Line up that white line with the O. Lines lined up. Barrel comes out. There we go. Barrel's out. Now, this rail, you can use your Allen key up on top here and take this entire rail off. I don't need to do it um, for what we're gonna do here today. It doesn't really add anything to this detail strip, except for this rail would be off and you just put it right back on there. So we're not gonna do that right now. Now the swing swivel, the sling swivel, uh, which is right here, we are going to use that since it's now gone to be able to pull out this next section. First thing though we're gonna do is I'm going to use, I'm gonna depress this little capture pin right here, pull it out, the back opens up. Out comes, Boom, your bolt carrier group and everything else. I tend to close that just so it gets out of my way. And now, right here, this black portion is gonna slide forward. That's where your gas system rides through. All right, there we go. There you go. All right, so now you're down. There's, there's really nothing left. This is almost entirely polymer left in here. Your trigger is right here. You guys can see there's a trigger. So it goes right down into the bottom there and everything is out of here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work into the trigger, show you guys how to install the Geisy Lightning Bow, which happens to be in right now because I'm filming this for the second time. But we're gonna do a time warp, warp backwards, install this and reassemble the entire gun. And that way you guys can see from start to finish how this is done. Hopefully this helps. I know a lot of people have had a really rough time with the video. Um, with finding videos how to do this, I hope this one helps. All right guys, let's cut here and get right to the trigger. All right guys, so we have the barrel, we have everything off of here. That's your trigger right here. I'm gonna use this punch to, to symbolize, right? So that's the trigger. That's the linkage right there that's kind of the pain that, uh, it's not really pain, but it takes a little bit to get off there. We'll take that off in a second. So first things first, we're gonna use our punch and we're gonna knock out that little pin right there. So let's knock this guy out. Um, now I've done this before, so it's a little bit looser. When you guys first do your first time, it is in there really hard. All right, so now um, we had the spring already out of there, guys. That's my bad. Um, I was messing around with it and I took that spring out off video. So next thing we're gonna do is we are going to hold this linkage close to the side of the body right there. So I'm using my finger to that. Then we're going to lift the trigger away from that linkage as gently as possible without screwing it up and try to get you guys can see right here see that little arm that's built into the linkage that little arm connects the trigger to that linkage so we have to disconnect that and it's literally just in there into the hole so there we go all right so that's why these videos are hard to make guys there's your trigger we're placing it with this one the geisley lightning bow now first thing you have to do take off this right here. So we're taking this off. You're gonna see a lot of guys who don't take this off, they're reinstalling these incorrectly, is my understanding. So we take that off. Now, 
This is gonna go in, just the reverse we did the other trigger. That little bar right there is what goes in the linkage arm. So we're gonna drop this in. Hopefully you guys can see this, because it is obviously dark trying to do all this. So there you go. That drops down. Now, you gotta hold the linkage away and get that little arm in there. There we go. So that's in the linkage arm right there. Now, we're not gonna put this stuff from the trigger in there yet. What we have to do is reinstall the pin. So the pin is gonna go in. And now, this is the uh, a little bit of annoying part because you gotta kinda figure out where it's at. But at the same time, it's not it's too annoying. See that little cutout right there in that pin? This goes into the trigger, onto this. Helps keep it in there. So, put this in this side. Now, the tricky part is, where's your lineup point? And that is, from what I have seen, usually this is almost flush. Oops, a little too far. That's probably actually pretty close. So, we're gonna put this back to where we just took it out of, but this little arm, instead of sitting on the side of it, is gonna sit down into that hole, and hopefully enter that little notch now the thing to do is to move that pin back and forth until this drops in and it's easier than it sounds because you're moving it just hairs hoping that you don't go past that accident i must have went past it so my pin is sticking out too far so again guys not easy just kind of push it gently i'm just pushing on that pin from the other side now away from the camera and trying to get this little trigger portion to snap down into there. There we go. You guys see that? So now this little piece of metal right there is flat, which means it's in that little notch area because if it wasn't in the notch, as you saw before, it wouldn't be flat. It would be sticking up away from it a little bit. A lot of guys did not read in the Geisley packaging where it says you have to do that. Uh, I've seen two videos about doing this and neither one of them did that. So now I'm just tightening this down There you go. Now, what you can do is you can adjust your uh, trigger bow with this little screw back here to take up some of the slack. It's not easy because everything's disassembled, so you're not going to be able to do a lot of the stuff, like really feel where it's at. You have to disassemble it and then change it a little bit. So, um, you, you can get a little bit of a feel of how much slack there is. Right now, I've got almost no slack, and that's really where I want it. So, I'm going to leave that there and at least try it for now. Now, reassembly. Um, we're going to step back, use the big camera again, and we're going to go through the reassembly steps. All right, guys, so um, one, been plagued by issues all day to this video. Multiple issues. Broken, uh, broken punches, things just stopped recording randomly, so we're kind of piecemealing this together. All right, so we've got our trigger in here. You guys just saw that from the overhead view. Uh, now we're going to reassemble the gun. Don't worry about manhandling this a little bit. Everything takes a little bit of force to get back into the gun. Um, again, it's, it's a gun, guys. You know, it, it'll go back together, you're not gonna break it. Um, so that goes back into there. The silver portion faces out. Um, you can't go into there anyways, but just so you know, silver portion faces out. Uh, sling, quick disconnect. You're gonna put the screw through this side that has the concave. That's gonna go into there. Take this portion. And that's the portion the cotter pin goes into. Start screwing it in, this is just a start. Now, remember as you're doing this, take something, I just use an Allen key, and push from this side so it can't just turn itself continuously. It makes it a whole lot easier. You can be sitting there spinning all day if you don't do it this way. All right, get it nice and tight. Now, the one thing you have to figure out, might actually even look like it perfect, the hole for the cotter pin to go into is inside the screw. So you gotta make sure that it's lined up enough that you can do it, but not too much. And yep, looks like mine's gonna work. Use your punch, just kind of push it down there. And mine is good. Okay, so there's that. Now, next thing we go to is the barrel. So, barrel assembly right here. Again, you can't take off this rail. There's no reason to, or for this video we don't need to, so I'm not gonna do it. Your barrel is going to slide in, and your rail section make sure it rides on the actual rails and we're going to slide this in 
It's easier than it sounds. You gotta line everything up. I'm not doing it. There we go. Everything looks good. Oops, sorry guys, that's probably super loud. Alright, so I'm riding on something that I'm not supposed to. Apparently. Alright, so let's take this back out here for a second. Let's just check it one more time, make sure there's nothing where I'm not supposed to have it. Everything looks good. Okay, so, so you guys understand the same thing I just did. The rail was slightly canted to the left. I was paying attention more to the barrel than the rail. And there's actually a portion here that the rail slides on. Now I'm probably going to get it the second time. Right here. It has to be perfectly level with that. I was slightly canted, and where it starts up here, it just wasn't allowed to go in. So you, know, you don't manhandle everything, but you can manhandle a lot of it. All right, so that's barrels back in now. Now, Probably the most annoying thing if you're talking to me done before is again the barrel lock So you see on here. It's lined up with open a little white line right there We're gonna take uh, one a punch or I'm gonna use an allocate because I broke the punch and I'm gonna depress This little locking portion right here And I'm going to grab a smaller allen key We are going to depress this portion right here so that this portion is up and above the polymer. This thing right here, I know it's hard to see you guys, but that's what you're gonna take. We lost one of our cameras, so we don't have an, we don't have an up close camera right now. While we're doing that, we're gonna take our barrel wrench, come into here, and then turn it until that white line is back to the L for the locked position. So let's go ahead and do that. And we go back to this Allen key. So Got this opened all the way up, and now I'm going to take barrel wrench and turn it. You guys can see it's about halfway now. I'm going to take the wrench, turn it the other way, so I can get a little more grip on it. Make sure you keep this um, this other notch on the other side open otherwise it just cuts right into your polymer so we're going to keep going up here and it's going to get tight guys because you are doing something that's going to hold the barrel in the place so going going you're almost there it looks like we are close get this depressed a little bit more Let's see where we're at now we are really close. Do make sure this lines up exactly, guys. Take the time and effort to make sure this is lined up perfect. There we go, we're perfectly at the L. On this side, this now falls directly into place. And you can see this little cutout, let me use this thing right here, where the tip of this punch is right here, that's where it has to fall into, so this has to be exact. All right, so we've got that. Now, next thing we are going to do is slide on our charging handle, I'm not gonna put it in there. There's a way to do that, but it's kind of a pain. The charging handle is obviously gonna go through the charging handle port right here. There's a small opening right back here, which there's no way you guys are gonna see. It has to go into there. So I am going to line it up for that hole. Sorry, I'm face away from you. And that goes right into there. You can see it functions, slides easily. Without going to that hole, there's no way it's gonna go back to the rearward position. Now, our fore end, and you don't need to remove this little block, guys. It'll go over it. Um, it might get stuck. You gotta move it around a little bit, but it will go on. Now, fore end is on. You can see it's locked into place. Everything is perfect. We're going to take the screw, try the Allen key, and this is going there. We'll screw with the Allen lock on it. We're gonna take our three millimeter, tighten this screw right here. Now, later I'm gonna go back and apply some Loctite 242 if it's me. I'm not going to tighten that up. Your four ends on. Now, grip. That lines up just like that. You guys can see the uh, hole right there, and you can see a little where the screw goes. 
this again, like I mentioned before, holds your forend in place. So this needs to be ooh, needs to be in uh, correctly. All right, there we go. And giant screw goes in the bottom there. You need a Phillips head for this. Turn that, turn that. Obviously get this nice and tight, guys. Don't over tension it, but definitely get it nice and tight. Now, let's go ahead and put on our muzzle device. I'm gonna obviously lock tight this later as well, guys but we're just kind of doing the full on assembly here. And of course right now I am impossible to get this lined up apparently. There we go. All right, so we'll tighten that up later and get it all lined up. Now we've got our bolt carrier group. Put that guy back in. This is the part, guys, where I'm constantly looking around the table trying to figure out, did I miss a part? And the gun's not going to function. Not that the gun has much to take out of it, but every once in a while, I just get worried. Now, there we go. Full disassembly, full reassembly. Let's make sure it works. Safety off. Boom. Guys, so what we've done is we've installed the Super Saber. We've shown a full disassembly and a full reassembly. Now we're going to do the one part we haven't done, and we're going to take out the trigger pack, because right now there's a Super Saber pack in there. We're going to take that out, and we're going to put in the stock pack. So to do that, there's two uh, self-capturing pins right here. You're going to push those in. Oops, sorry, you know what? Cock this first. You need to do that. All right, so. There we go. These ones are much tougher than the Tabor in terms of how they're captured in there. Not impossible, and they're easy to push once you get them out there. there you go. Now, you're gonna pull this down, and this trigger kit will fall out. It's in the cock position, that's how it should be. So it makes it easy to get another. Now we're gonna put in the stock trigger pack. So to do that, we're gonna open this door back up. I know it's gonna be hard to see, it's black on black. Push that in, let that close. Now we're gonna push these self-captured pins back through. You should hear them snap, there we go. All right, so. We're going to cock this thing, it should already be there, we're just going to make sure. Now, we are going to, from this angle, as best as possible, give you guys five trigger pulls. We're going to have the camera come up and over. We're going to do five trigger pulls, see where the average is. Then we're going to take the stock trigger back out, put the super saver back in, and see where those five trigger pulls get you. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so we're over top of the X95 now. We are going to clear this. We'll hit ready. Let's get our first pull. This is, let's get that again. This is the Geisley Lightning Bow uh, trigger with the stock trigger pack in the X95. Let's go ahead and get a pull. Five pounds, 3.8 ounces. I'm trying to move the table too much, guys. Get ready. Do it for a second one. Five pounds, 4.5 ounces. Five pounds, 4.2 ounces. Number four. Five pounds, 7.8 ounces. Number five to round out our group here. Five pounds, 2.4 ounces. That gives us an average of five pounds, 4.5 ounces. So respectable. Uh, definitely a modern uh, AR-15. So now we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the trigger pack that's in there, the stock trigger packs. So let's punch these guys out. All right, open this up. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't recock it. So let's recock that real quick. There we go. This thing will now fall out as it should. It was half cocked. That's my bad. Makes it easier, guys, if you if you do all this the proper way. Just kind of speeding through a little bit, obviously. That goes in. Push these self-capture pins back through. There we go. 
Now, let's go ahead and cock this just to make sure we're sitting right. All right, those are all locked in. Let's go back to this guy. We are going to clear it. Hit ready. So this is with the Geisley Lightning Bow and the Super Sabra light, uh, trigger pack. Three pounds, 14.6 ounces. There we go. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Number three. Three pounds, 9.3 .3 ounces. Number four. Three pounds, 4.4 .4 ounces. And number five, let's round out our group. Three pounds, 9.0 ounces, let's do an average. Three pounds, 10.1 ounces. That is a very solid competition or self-defense trigger. This is gonna be great for whatever you're doing. So that is with the Geisley Lightning Bow Trigger and the Super Saber uh, trigger pack. Now again, those do add cost to your Tavor. Um, but again, we're dropping that trigger down significantly. You guys saw in the other video, when we were running the stock trigger with the stock trigger pack, we were in the uh, high sixes, if I remember correctly, maybe in the high sevens. Have you go back to that video and check it out. And now we're down to three, point, uh, three pounds, 10.1 ounces. That's a fantastic trigger, guys. This is where the Tavor was at, very close to it. And uh, I saw an increase, a very significant decrease in my times for shooting this rifle, especially doing double taps, um, which is what you want to see because I was using it mostly for competition. Dave, I wonder if I'm wondering if there's a way we can put this trigger in with that trigger, maybe like underneath that trigger, and we can shoot like two bullets at one time. It's probably ETF leak. Well, now they probably don't need it. I mean, maybe put on the side, like gangster, you know? It might work. I don't know. All right, so uh, Dave just stepped away. We're gonna go get rid of her from it. All right, so you guys have asked about this video. You've asked me to do some videos. I enjoy doing videos. I do. They're giant pain in the butt, though. Poor Dave today. He comes out, brings me his punch set. When I was put away, I break his punch first thing. Uh, let me grab his thing. So it's a nice punch set, because I don't have one. Uh, I'm that typical guy who just does all the stuff, doesn't have anything. I break his punch. Only when he has it this size. So, that was a great start. Not that he cared, but, you know, break there. Uh, two, Dave was my little lap dog. Running up and down, taking the video. Doing the video over top of this thing. Poor guy's downstairs right now trying to find me a little wrench. Uh, because apparently, uh, I only had metric. I didn't have the regular. Of course, on metric, I'm missing one and a half and two uh, for the metric. Because I got freaking kids. And kids, they take everything. They're like little scavenging animals. They see something shiny, and they take it. And they disappear. And you never find it until you don't need it. And then all of a sudden, somebody says, hey, here's your Allen key. And I was my little five-year-old. I'm like, where was this at? He's like, I don't know. Why did you have it? I don't know. Freaking kids. Little scavenging animals, like raccoons. Um, and then you feed them, and they come back. So we feed these kids, they keep coming back. And they keep stealing more of my stuff. And I have less and less stuff. If, it, if the, the Tabor was any smaller, I think they'd have this somewhere, too. They'd, they'd put buried away in their closet with their stuffed animal or something like that. It's ridiculous. The kids. Um, so anyways, uh, let me know what you guys thought about the video. Uh, but that was a little bit of a get real moment here because it was, it was an interesting video. We had, you know, we had the first thing we were using an iPad. That thing went out because it was full of storage. Uh, storage full on it. Switched to the other phone and the microphone fell out. And then I was doing something else and the camera wasn't even on. And, uh, you know, Dave comes off, ah, the camera's not even on. And I was sitting here just mumbling on and on. And, uh, you know, the other phone, that thing rings, and ah, so. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoy it. You can do a little behind the scenes here of why these videos take so freaking long to do. Um, but, uh, you know, enjoy. Have fun, guys. Thanks.